Dave knows how. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to make a small video about the hydraulic system on your tractor. And what prompted this video was I had a subscriber who was trying to follow along in my series about adding rear remotes to the tractor and installing a spool valve. And I guess parts of that video was kind of like clear as mud. I apologize for that. Sometimes when you start doing a project, you have good intentions. You want to make a good quality video, and you also want to get the job done. And a lot of times, getting the job done gets in the way of making a good quality video. So what ends up lacking is a little bit of clarity to the video. I really think that if I make this little video right here illustration to show how the hydraulic system works, you can better understand how the hydraulic system works on your tractor. Then you'll be able to follow along that video a whole lot easier. It'd be much easier to understand and you should be able to succeed flawlessly with installing your rear remotes and your control valve or spool valve. Let's go ahead and jump in here and get started. Looking at the center of the screen, you'll notice a tank. This tank represents the holding tank of the hydraulic fluid in your Kubota tractor, or any tractor for that matter. The red inside the tank is a hydraulic fluid. On the right hand side of the tank you'll notice a red dotted line that travels up to the low pressure input of the hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump is sucking the hydraulic fluid out of the holding tank it's bringing it into the pump, it's pressurizing it, and it's sending it down the solid green line. It travels down the solid green line and goes into the manifold block. The manifold block on this tractor is showing that it has nothing hooked to it. There's no front end loader. There's no spool valve. There's no backhoe. The only thing that's hooked to it is the three-point lift. The first thing that happens when the hydraulic fluid comes into the manifold block is it goes past the relief valve. The relief valve is a safety system for the hydraulic system of the tractor. It's very important that it operates correctly. It's set to a specific pound and that's where it needs to stay. You hear a lot of talk about people that will adjust this relief valve to turn their hydraulics up and gain a little bit more lift capacity. I really do not think this is a good idea. As it is right now, the hydraulic fluid enters into the manifold block. It goes past the relief valve. If the relief valve senses that the hydraulic fluid is too high pressure, the relief valve will open up and dump all the hydraulic fluid back to tank. This red dotted line is the back to tank port located at the back of the manifold block. It sends a hydraulic fluid up this line and dumps it directly back into the tank where it can cool down and be reused. When the hydraulic fluid goes into the manifold block and the pressure is correct, the relief valve does not open. The manifold block diverts the hydraulic fluid to the power beyond port located at the back of the manifold block. This blue line represents a hose that's connected at the back of the manifold block and transfers the hydraulic fluid from the back of the manifold block up the power beyond line to the three point lift system. Once the hydraulic fluid arrives at the three-point system, it goes through a valve that's a control valve that is actually a positioning valve. You can set this valve at various positions and it will hold a three-point hitch at certain heights. When the three-point system is done with using the hydraulic fluid, it dumps the unused fluid back out the tank port 
This port marked with a T is the back to tank port. This red dotted line is a hose that travels from the three point lift system back to the tank. It dumps the fluid back in the tank where it's stored and cools down until it's ready to be sent back down and back into the pump, repressurized and sent back down to the manifold block to replete the cycle again. Now let's see what happens when we add a front end loader. When we add a front end loader, we need to change some things about the manifold block. A lot of times if you order a tractor that does not have a front end loader on it, the front of this manifold block will just have a blank piece of steel on it. When you order one that has a front end loader on it, the front of the manifold block will have three outlets where you can connect three different hoses. Let's see what it looks like with a front end loader valve hooked up. So as you can see, things have changed with the manifold block. We now have three outlets on the manifold block. We have a main out, we have a tank, we have a power beyond port. Let's look at what happens starting at the main pump. At the main pump, we have low pressure coming in. The pump pumps it up to high pressure and sends it down the solid green line. The hydraulic fluid enters into the manifold block. It immediately goes past the relief valve. If everything goes fine, the hydraulic fluid is now diverted to the main output line. The main output line is designated in this diagram by a green dotted line. The fluid runs out through this green dotted line, which is actually a hose. This hose can be seen here in this picture of my manifold block on the side of my Kubota tractor. So back to the illustration. From the manifold block, the fluid is traveling out of this main output. It travels up the hydraulic line and goes into the front end loader valve. It enters the front end motor loader valve at the main input of the front end loader valve. This can vary from valve to valve. You need to look at your instruction manual and find out which port on your front end loader valve is the main in inlet port. You can always look in your instruction manual and, and look at the manifold block and see which one is the main output and just trace that line out. If the factory installed it, you know it's pretty much right. Once the fluid goes into the front end loader valve, it has to go past another relief valve. This is the relief valve on the front end loader valve. It's just an orange block. The fluid goes past that relief valve. If the fluid pressure is too high, the relief valve opens. When the relief valve opens, it diverts all the fluid inside the front end loader valve to the back to tank port. The back to tank port is is always got a, number, a letter T stamped next to it. The fluid then travels down a hose that's connected to the back to tank port and goes back down to the manifold block, dumps back into the back to tank port at the manifold block on the front and comes out the manifold block at the back to tank port on the back side and then travels back and dumps into the tank. When the fluid comes into the front end loader valve and the pressure is not exceeding the relief valve, then the fluid is ready to be used. You can operate your joystick on your front end loader valve and it'll raise your bucket, it'll lower your bucket, it'll curl your bucket, and it'll dump your bucket. When this is going on, the fluid is being used. When the joystick is in the neutral position and it's not being used at all, this diverts the hydraulic fluid from the main input to the power beyond output on the front end loader. You can see the power beyond output on the front end loader with this blue dot. I'll insert a picture here of what these hoses look like on my front end loader valve. 
So at this power beyond port right here, we've got a hose that's hooked in. That hose goes down and underneath the tractor and back to the manifold block and is hooked into the power beyond port at the manifold block. From there, the fluid travels through the manifold block out the back of the power beyond port at the back of the manifold block and up to the three-point lift system where it can be used there. Once it's finished being used there, it's dumped into the tank again where it's cooled off and then reused and pumped through the system to continue the trend. Now if we decide we want to add a backhoe into this system, it's very easy to do. We simply need to put the backhoe into the Power Beyond circuit. This blue dotted line is the Power Beyond circuit. We can put the backhoe in anywhere on this Power Beyond circuit. So if we go to the manifold block and we disconnect the hose at the Power Beyond circuit, I'll put a picture up of where that hose is connected right here. If we take this hose and disconnect it and we run it to the back of the tractor, we can power a backhoe. Let's check it out and see what that looks like. So right here we have added a backhoe. Starting at our front end loader valve on the right hand side of the screen, we've got this hose hooked into the power beyond port. The hose travels down underneath the tractor. The hose travels all the way to the back of the tractor and up and out right around at the three point hitch. This hose is plugged into the power beyond input line of the backhoe. We then plug an additional hose in the power beyond output line of the backhoe. We run that line down underneath the tractor and back to the manifold block and bolt it into the power beyond port of the manifold block. The fluid then enters there and travels to the back of the manifold block and out the power beyond at the back of the manifold block and up to the three point hitch to be used there. This completes the circuit. As you can see we're basically putting things in series. Now let's add in some rear remotes and use a spool valve. So we're going to put a spool valve in here. We can add it in anywhere on this power beyond circuit. Let's see what that looks like. So as you can see, we've added our new spool valve. We've came to the backhoe. We've got a hold to the hose that is the power beyond out hose. We've disconnected that hose and we've added a short hose and screwed it into the female connector at the Power Beyond outlet at the backhoe and ran it to the Power Beyond input or main input of the new spool valve. The new spool valve can either be laid labeled PN or PI for power input it may be labeled main input. It'll all depend on the manufacturer. You'll have to look at the instructions and find out which port on that new spool valve is the main inlet. You want to hook this line to the main inlet. This new spool valve also has a relief valve. When the hydraulic fluid comes into the new spool valve, it's going to go past the relief valve first. If the relief valve senses that the pressure is too high, it's going to open up and it's going to dump the hydraulic fluid back down and out the tank, back to tank port. The back to tank port is labeled with a T. There's an orange dotted line, a red dotted line. That's a hose that's connected to the back to tank port and runs down to the manifold block where it's teed into the hose that comes from the front end loader 
and dumps back into the back to tank port at the manifold block. Additionally, at the new spool valve, we're going to run a, a hose that's going to go from the power beyond port that exits the new spool valve. It will be labeled power beyond out. Sometimes it's labeled with a C. I don't know why and I don't know how come they come up with that. But some of the ones from China are labeled with a C. You'll have to read the instructions to find out exactly which port is the power beyond port. Sometimes you have to go inside of that port and unscrew something else and take it out in order for the power beyond to actually work. Read the instructions. A hose is connected to the power beyond output and ran to the power beyond input of the manifold block. When the new spool valve is not being used, the fluid travels from the power beyond input to the power beyond output and then into the power beyond input of the manifold block. Once inside the power beyond input of the manifold block, it travels to the power beyond output and the back of the manifold block and up to the three-point hitch. Now there are a few things that we're not showing in this diagram. On the new spool valve and on the front end loader valve, we are not showing the ports that operate the hydraulic cylinders. So there's on this new spool valve that I have on my tractor, it's a two spool valve. That means that it has two control levers. I'll put up a photo of what those spool levers look like. So when you're operating those spool levels, they operate a hydraulic cylinder. Since I have two, there's four additional outputs on here. Two of them run one cylinder, two of them run another cylinder. When we get to the front end loader valve, we have the same situation. There's four additional out outlets on this front end loader valve. Two of those outlets are to raise and lower the bucket. Two of those outlets are to curl and dump the bucket. They should be pretty self-explanatory when you look at it. You'll know exactly what they're for. The instructions that come with the new spool valve, they're pretty good instructions, so you should be able to figure it out. Well, that's pretty much it. I think this should help you to better understand how your hydraulic system works on your tractor. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.